is April in Minnesota. Oh man. Yay. So snowmageddon in April dumped 19 inches on us. Let's see if we can get out. Can you get in? <laughs> Back up. Okay. One more time, back up. Well, it didn't take me long after getting my first pole blade to realize I'd been snow plowing wrong for 27 years. So I needed to put a second one on this truck so it's off to Snowpower headquarters in Muskegon, Michigan to get a 180 degree reversible Snowpower blade installed on this truck. Come up the other side and see how, how fast it goes, but that was pretty dang, uh, that's, that's pretty slick around light poles. Because there's light poles eh, throughout this whole parking lot. You can see them all behind them, in front of them, and watch what he can do with these light poles. As he pulls forward, he scoops the wing in, and when he gets around the light pole, he puts the wing back out. Here, I'll try to I'll try to show you that better, guys. Watch him as he comes to the light pole, brings that wing right in, and as he gets around the pole, scoops it right back out. This is swipe number four in this parking lot. Two more swipes. He's got this done, and this is at least a two hour parking lot for us. Let's see what he thinks. I thought that'd be a lot harder being on the passenger side. Yeah. Looking in your mirror on that side, but this is my first time using this plow and this controller. It needs to get wired into my brain, but I, I can see it's not gonna take that long. One of the things that people say a lot of times, Tim, is these plows are harder on a truck. But you did not just go forward and backward, forward and backward around this light pole probably three or four times like we would with a push plow. No. And as I get better, I'll be able to get tighter on those and plan it around, around them a little better. But yeah, it was, it was, that was two sweeps. Normally pushing everything aside, then you gotta back up push the two ends of the light poles you can't you know around each side push it that way and then fan it over yep. this would have been how many passes with a regular front plow I have ran a, one of these plows with a lot of snow yeah. and they're pretty effective up to about five inches six yeah. inches and then then it gets a little tough on the truck doesn't it we had that heavy wet cement stuff so that was a little bit plus i didn't know how to run that plow yet either that was my first night with a one foot snowfall of wet heavy snow so didn't know how much i should be biting off or how to do it but those guys down in michigan were taking and scooping through the middle and getting yourself a path and then biting it off on either side if that makes any sense but yeah get a nice path through the middle and then bite it off in sections i was trying to take full width of the plow for a yeah. while there and just to be able to back up to that island right there and pull it this way is pretty slick because once you back drag with the front plow, it pushes it, squishes it down. And you can't, you, you're like wasting your time. You gotta wait for a skid steer to come do stuff like that in the tight areas. Yeah. With this, you don't. You can just back right up to a curb, pull it right out. I'd like to just try not to use my front plow at all. I almost didn't bring it with. <laughs> Save on cutting edges. Uh, all right, we got drive lanes to do. All right. Drew, you've got five of them, right? Yes. you got five so far. Now, you live in Muskegon or Muskogee? How do you spell it? Yeah, Muskegon. Muskegon? Yeah. Muskegon County. All right, how many times have you plowed this year? Over 50 times. How many inches of snow would you say you guys have? What are you thinking? Ooh, we got to be over 100. Close to it. You were telling me something about the wings that you said was the game changer. What were you about saying? About the what? The wings. What were you saying about the wings that were the game changer? Oh, the, the release. So you're in a 45, you hit a island, a 
car, <laughs> whatever you hit, your wing is gonna release instead of breaking your shear bolts, your shear pins, anything. To me, that makes the whole blade. What's the reason why you have five of them? Oh, because, I mean, you virtually have no downtime anymore. You know, the old style we used to have, you would constantly be breaking wings off, wing bolts, shear pins, everything else. You're, going down the road, your blade would be like this because you'd hit something and bend it because nothing gives. Where these, your wings give all your... Starting this is all in this fifth wheel rail hitch. And so you have a fifth rail system that's mounted in the truck and then your, the plow actually hooks into that. I mean, it, it's it's great. You have no downtime, man. Front plow or a pull plow or a back drag plow? Which one? Oh, that all day. So if you had to all only day. pick one, what that, would it be? Right here. You looking at it? So you all would. Day. So if you had to drop one of the two, you'd leave the front plow at home. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, There's yeah, trucks out here. You should go look at the cutting edge <laughs> after 50 plows on. Yeah, it. Oh, let's that's go. true. Let's yeah. go look at the cutting edge. All right, we're gonna look at your plow after 50 events. Wild life plow. I can probably get. At least another season out of it, if not two. I can raise it up a little. I mean, I'd say you got it. You're not even down 50%. No, we're not. And this is uh, why we extend this right here. Rick, how you doing, buddy? Doing good. All right, good guys. To see you. This is Rick. He's the owner and original inventor. So that this can scrub the curb, and you're not getting into this plow as much. That's what that's there. Yeah, but well, really what we've got to look at is the distance from this point to this point. Screw yeah. it. Why that's don't like we measure it? Where's the tape? We got tape measure? I would say it has more than Western. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, John. You just said it. All right, so let's see how many inches of blade you got left. All right, so this is a season. You got a season on it. Three and three and a quarter? You, got, you got almost three and a half. Just a titch under three and a half. Let's go measure a brand new one. Because your cutting edge wear is part of your maintenance. That's nuts. You <laughs> seriously have only wore a quarter of an inch off your blade in a single season. Yeah. Do it plowing 50 times. Yes. And that's not, you know, mom and pop plowing. That's doing full commercial lots. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Long, long runs too. So it's heating up that poly and all that. The more snow you have, there's more lubricity. That's the biggest thing. If it's dry and you're gonna run it, it's gonna wear out. It's gonna be like a rat. It's gonna cut it. When you have snow on the ground, it's smooth. You're not even touching the cutting edge almost. So while we were talking, Rick said he plows at 25 to 30 miles an hour, which I didn't believe. So I pulled him into his office to find out a little bit more. So you plowed since 82 and you built your own snow plows for yourself. Correct. That's where this whole thing started from. And then as you made changes and advancements in the snow plow, you'd sell off the old ones and build a new one. Alright, so you actually know how to snow plow. Yes sir. Okay, so that's uh, that's the point I want to make. When he said he plows at 25-30 miles an hour, right. you actually meant it. You weren't mistaken. No, sir. People don't usually call me, sir, this is odd. All right, so um, tell me about that though. So It's only when you have a half inch or three quarters of an inch of snow. I used to plow Sam's, Lowe's, Walmart, Target. We had like zero tolerance. So I don't care if it's three eighths of an inch. We would go out and dust it off. Okay, so you would, on, on those small, you were saying on the very small snow falls. Up to an inch. Up to an inch, sure. you can go that fast with this plow. Because there's no way you'd do it with a push plow. Well, with a plow mounted on the front of the truck. Not really safely. With this, if you hit something, boom, and you just keep going, you have control. And you don't need the big down It pressure. actually tends to put my forehead into the steering wheel of the truck. So now I know a few of you are interested in how this actually hooks into the truck. So let's just show you. So it goes from the battery, 200 amp breaker, yep. to the back of the truck. Your own 200 amp breaker? Yep, we oh, have our okay. own separate 200 amp breaker that goes on the truck. Oh, okay. I'm surprised at how simple this connects to the truck. Oh yeah, it's 100% ready. All you gotta do is two self tappers, bolt your resettable breaker on, and hook it up to your battery, and you'll be good to go. And that's it? Yep. Because I thought it would have to run into the cab and then run through Underneath the truck. So you, yeah, you ran everything under the truck right to the plow. Yep. Yep. Everything goes to the back right to the Anderson connector. Yep. Plugs in and then you're hooked up. You got full power back there. Right. Hey, you're adjusting the down pressure. Adjusting the flow of going down. Really slow. Or you 
can keep speeding it up to where you want it to be at. Or you can go to guillotine gear, mode, or you can go to crazy fast speed, <laughs> which breaks stuff. Now a front plow doesn't have down pressure, it's gravity only, but a pull plow actually has down pressure. Here's a demonstration. So what I want to show you next is how you drop off the plow in between snowfalls. About a 30 second operation to drop it off and hook it back up. Plow is held into the fifth rail system with just two pins. Pull them out, lock them out, and you're free. And when it's time to hook back up, you just put the two pins back in place, attach the power cord, and you're good to go. So the next thing we're going to show you is how you drop the plow at the end of the season and then how you reconnect the entire system if you're ready to go again. So the plow connects into the bed of the truck via a fifth rail system with four connection points and then also into the hitch of the truck, distributing the weight over the entire back end of the unit. So you get five, po five points lined up. You get the four, you get the four in the Bang. bed, and the hitch yep. lined up, and then you pin them. show you some of the different configurations. Right here, this is 16 foot full width. This next one is for forward or reverse wind rowing. So when you get into heavier or deeper snow and you can't carry all of it, this is the configuration you use. Because what you're doing now is you're wind rowing it over to the driver's side. You're pulling forward. Now what you're gonna see next is a full box for reverse pushing. We do a lot of reverse pushing with this snow power, but we usually typically will go a 45 box because it optimizes it and also allows the wings to give if you hit the snow bank. So snow power has their own nice cap. strobe light. Can you turn that on for me, John, to show? I want to show this. So we got a strobe light, which is cool. I mean, standard strobe light, but it does something different that I want to show. This right here. That's a backup light, guys. So as you're operating now, you actually have a light behind you. Did you guys design that too? Yes. He just plowed a two car garage in two swipes. One, two swipes. Done.